This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to do a smackdown between two really hot tablets. Here we have the Microsoft Surface Pro 2 on this side, and here we have the Lenovo ThinkPad Yoga. Both of these have op digitizers. It's optional on this one, Wacom Pen. This one comes with the Wacom Pen. Kind of portable, kind of light, Windows 8.1. We're going to look at them now. So here we have the battle between two tablets. One's actually a tablet slash convertible, but they have some things in common that, that mean, I think a lot of you are trying to consider and decide between the two of these. Right here we have the new Lenovo ThinkPad Yoga, not to be confused with the Yoga 13 or the Yoga 2 Pro. This is the business-oriented model that has the optional Wacom digitizer with digital pen. Here we have Surface Pro 2, second generation Microsoft Surface with full Intel Core CPU inside. Obviously a tablet first and foremost. And looking at the difference in the size of these, boy the Surface just looks kind of teeny, doesn't it? It's funny because it's a 10.6 inch device, and we'll bring it up right close so you can see them eye to eye with each other. This is a 12 and a half inch device. Now the, the Yoga at 12 and a half inches is actually smaller than most convertibles that are 13.3 inches, some are even bigger. So you're already talking about something smaller, so you get an idea how small Surface Pro 2 is given the fact that it's kind of dwarfed by even the 12 and a half inch device. And that gets to what do you want first, a tablet or an Ultrabook? If you really want a tablet first, obviously the Surface Pro 2 is a great choice. 10.6 inches and 2 pounds. It's much more portable than the other Windows convertibles that are on the market. They're usually around 3 pounds, sometimes a little bit under, sometimes a little bit over. It's portable, it's easy to carry. Yes, it's not as light as some Android tablets or the iPad, but still it's pretty thin. As you can see here, and we have the option, the two position stand going on there that helps prop it up for you. But obviously, this is pretty darn easy to carry around, isn't it? it, it it's just very portable. The ThinkPad is still really, first and foremost, an Ultrabook. It has the presentation mode and all those neat things. And you can watch our video review and read our written review to learn everything about it. But here's the keyboard that retracts automatically when you put it in tablet position or presentation mode, and then the keys start moving when you put it in this position. So for those of you who need an Ultrabook first, obviously this is the better choice. You get not just the great ThinkPad keyboard, you get, well, a normal keyboard right here. Now with the Surface, you're going to be using these optional covers that are not included. They have the Type Cover 2 and the Touch Cover 2. This one here is the Touch Cover 2. It's a fabric one that doesn't have any moving parts. The, the second generation, the 2 model, actually is quite usable, surprisingly, much better than the first generation, but still there's no movable keys here. But, aha, uh -huh. we do also have the Type Cover 2. It's only $10 that sets apart these two covers, $120 versus $130, and again, they're not included with the purchase price of your tablet. This one has traditional moving keys. They click, they move. You're still talking about 10.6 inches, so it's size constrained versus even something that's small like the 12.5 inch Yoga. It's a pretty good keyboard. It's not going to compete with the Lenovo keyboard, but it's pretty good. I've even used it to write articles. It's not that bad. These are backlit keyboards, these removable type cover and touch cover too keyboards as well. So you're going to get backlighting whether you get the ThinkPad or whether you get your Surface. When it comes to display, you're looking at an IPS display on either of these same full HD resolution. Obviously the pixel density is going to be a little bit higher on your Surface Pro 2 because you have the same number of pixels squeezed into a smaller area. They both look very nice and very sharp. The Surface 2 has bonded glass to reduce apparent glare. It's still pretty darn glary. And even when I compare it to the ThinkPad Yoga that has the non-active digitizer display, it's just a touch screen, it still has a bit more glare there. Now, this is the one with the Wacom digitizer, and it has a matte coating on the glass to reduce reflections even more. So if you really hate glare, you're probably going to prefer the ThinkPad with the Wacom digitizer option. How about pricing? Now both of these are not cheap items. The Surface Pro 2 starts at $899. That's a Core i5. No matter what, you're going to get a fourth generation Intel Haswell Core i5-4200 UCPU. That's the only option Microsoft offers. But that's $899. That's going to get you 64 gig SSD. That's just not enough for Windows and your programs and all that kind of thing. So realistically speaking, the $999 model that comes with 128 gig SSD is the real practical starting point for most of us. That gets you 4 gigs of DDR3 RAM. The RAM is soldered on the motherboard. The same is true of our Lenovo. The RAM is soldered on the motherboard. Either of these, you can get them with 4 or 8 gigs of RAM. 
Lenovo has 128 and 256 gig SSD options, and depending on where you are, you might see a 500 gig regular spinning HDD option as well. Aha, uh -huh, that gets into upgradable internals. On our ThinkPad, we're a bit more upgradable. RAM is soldered on board, but your hard drive is a standard 2.5 inch 7 millimeter high SATA 3 hard drive. It's, it's not one of those M SATA or M2 kind of drives, it's not obscure. It's pretty easy to open. It's undo Phillips head screws on the bottom, pull the bottom off, you can get to it. You can actually swap out your wireless card too if you want to. Everything else is not really upgradable on it. Surface Pro 2, if you read about it, you know that thing is sealed. Boy, you're not going to really want to get in there. It involves peeling the glass off the front just to get to the internals. Don't even think about it. Order it the way you want it. It's available with 128, 256, or 512 gig SSDs. The 512 with 8 gigs of RAM is going to set you back $17.99. For $12.99, you can get 8 gig with a 256 gig SSD. And that seems to be the sweet and popular point because a lot of people have tried ordering that and it's forever out of stock on Microsoft's website. Lenovo starts at $11.99. That is the non-Wacom digitizer model. That's a Core i5-4200U, just like your Surface, 4 gigs of RAM, 128 gig SSD. The nice thing about Lenovo is you can order with all sorts of CPUs and things. They don't go as low as the Core i3, because I think they think of this as more of the business and power users machine. But you can get two different Core i5s and two different Core i7s on this. You can get it with 4 or 8 gigs of RAM, and again, I mentioned the hard drive option. So a little more versatility. For those of you who really want the horsepower, you want the i7 CPU, you're, you're having to look at the ThinkPad here and not at the Surface, since that stays at Core i5. That said, the performance difference between an i5 and an i7 ULV CPU is not really huge. Think of the i7 as just a kind of higher clocked, tweaked version of the i5. It's still dual core, same architecture, same 15 watt power consumption. While we've talked about the keyboard, we haven't talked about the trackpad. The trackpad on the ThinkPad Yoga is one of the best you're going to find on a Windows machine. Very responsive, very predictable, nice stuff. The trackpad on this is okay. It's better than nothing. These are, after all, accessory covers. You can plug in a keyboard, you can plug in a mouse if you want an even better typing and well, pointing experience. Of course, you can use your finger with either of these guys. 10-point multi-touch displays. But while we're talking about ports, that's where there's a bit of a disadvantage with the Surface Pro 2 and with all the other core tablets on the market. Not that there are very many of them, but we'll rip off our magnetically attached cover. You have the cover port in the bottom here. This also works with Microsoft's optional $199 docking station. Lenovo has their one link docking station, same business. It doesn't use up a USB port, it's a direct connection to the internals. However, the one link and one link pro have more ports than the Surface Pro 2 dock, that's 199. The one link port is 119, and the one link pro port is not out yet, but I believe that's going to cost 179 or 199. And we take a look around here, after that proprietary docking port right here, we have our single USB 3.0 port. Really on these tablets there just isn't room for more than that. We have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack on here, and this has a micro SDXC card slot, so it takes the micro version of cards. So we have the magnetic pogo style charging connector port over here, and we have our mini display port as well for out, video out. And the pen, which comes standard with every Surface Pro and Surface 2 Pro attaches magnetically to the charging port, so hopefully you won't lose it. Notice the pen, nice, big, comfortable. Both of these use the same Wacom tablet PC and Wacom Field drivers if you want to install that for pressure sensitivity in Photoshop. This is a nice pen with a racer style butt on the end, has the buttons, full size, very comfortable. Now our ThinkPad Yoga is more like an Ultrabook in terms of ports. There's our audio right there, 3.5 millimeter combo, USB 3.0 port. The charging port, and there's a little rubber plug in here. You can pull that out if you want to plug in the one link dock. It's going to plug in over here. And on the other side, we have another USB 3.0 port. So you start out with two on board. We have mini HDMI here. So instead of DisplayPort, which Lenovo really favors, I'm surprised it's not on here, on board, that's what we've got, mini HDMI. Full size SD card slot here. And this is where our pen goes. So here you have a more practical docking solution for your pen if you don't want to lose it. But look how scrawny this little pen is. It's just not the greatest pen. You're going to get a hand cramp if you have big hands writing with this. This does not function as a racer on the end either. So here's the difference between these two pens. So one way, you get to keep it inside because it's small enough they can make a silo for that. The other way, it clips on the outside, but you get a nicer pen. 
Here's the interesting thing. They both use the same Wacom technology. These pens are interchangeable. So I can use the ThinkPad pen on the Surface. I can use the Surface pen on the ThinkPad. They work equally well. So if you just want to go and buy a Surface pen and a nicer, bigger pen for your ThinkPad, you can do so. If you really wish you had a little skinny pen, though God knows why you would want that, you can actually order a ThinkPad pen and use it with your Surface. The digitizers on these behave very similarly. And you can see this is from our review that we did of the pen technology that we can draw right to the edges. Right now I'm in eraser mode, so I'm actually erasing those lines. And you can see I can get pretty close to the edges with that. It's pressure sensitive. We're just using fresh paint right now. So I can get a variety of line widths. Works perfectly well. Now we can do the same thing on our little friend, the surface. And you can see I can draw right to the edges. These are the things that art people are always worried about. We have pressure sensitivity. We have good tracking speed on both of these. Both of them work equally well for note taking. If you're getting the Core i5 on each of these, you're getting the same amount of horsepower, the same amount of capability in Photoshop. They both run very clean operating systems. Lenovo doesn't bloat up the ThinkPad line. Obviously, Surface is pretty much your basic pristine Microsoft experience here. So you're getting good performance in both of these benchmark at the top of their class for Core i5. Haswell machines. Both of these can function as tablets. Obviously, the Lenovo has several positions you can put it in, thanks to that 360 degree yoga style hinge. And this is pretty hefty to hold on to. The keys do lock on the back, they don't move at all. Nice. That's a ThinkPad feature. You won't get that on the IdeaPad yoga line things. I think for most people who are going to use this for note taking and drawing, they're probably going to rest it on their leg or on their table because three pounds and 12 and a half inches might be smaller than other convertibles on the market, but it's still got some heft to it. With the Surface, you get the idea. Much easier to hold, much easier to use like this. I'm not too strained. I use this all the time, actually, just for drawing and painting digitally. I love to do that. Pretty easy to hold on to. In terms of battery life, here's the interesting thing. It's funny. Sur Surface Pro 2, Microsoft came out with an update right after it was released. It really did wonders for the battery life. It goes about six hours on a charge without doing any draconian power management. And for a tablet, two pound tablet, that's considered great. And they have almost the same capacity batteries. Now, the ThinkPad Yoga also goes, well, it actually goes about six and a half hours without any effort to manage power over what the standard operating system does. And people are like, well, gee, for an Ultrabook, that's not so great. So it's funny. Either way, you're looking at similar battery life. With the ThinkPad Yoga, if you push it, if you use more aggressive power management settings, if you drop down the brightness, 400 nits of brightness, so dropping the brightness on this, you're still going to have a very bright screen. You could probably get to about eight hours. With Surface Pro 2, I have never exceeded six and a half hours, even using more aggressive power management. The screen is pretty bright on it. It's a little bit less bright, more around the 300 nits brightness, especially if you're using the auto brightness that tones down brightness on both of these. So I tend not to drop brightness quite as low on my Surface Pro 2, but pretty similar battery life. Both of these have batteries that are sealed inside, so you're not going to be able to swap in a battery on the road. Both of these are very sturdy machines. Surface Pro 2, yes, it has exposed glass on the front. By the way, Gorilla Glass on both of these items, but magnesium, vapor magnesium casing, as they call it, very rigid, no torsion, uh, pretty darn strong other than protecting that screen. And those type covers and touch covers do a good job of that. Right here we have magnesium alloy also. This is a ThinkPad. This guy is sturdy. This is the kind of thing you swing and hurt somebody with, so don't do that. Hinge very robust. So in either case, you're getting basically a black metal box that's incredibly sturdy. So I think you get the idea here. There is a lot of overlap. They're both, relatively speaking, portable machines. They're both available with Wacom digitizers and Wacom pens. They both run on Haswell, Intel, fourth generation core CPUs. A little bit more variability with your Lenovo. You can go up to a Core i7. You can get four or eight gigs of RAM on either. Solid state storage on both of these. But I think you see what the fine point differences are here. The Lenovo is a bit more upgradable for those of you who want to swap your hard drive, your wireless card after the fact. The Surface is the more portable guy, but you're giving up things like being able to take it apart and upgrade the parts. And also you're giving up on the keyboard experience. Of course, you could use a nice external Bluetooth keyboard with this or a USB keyboard. Typing is important to you too, and some people do that. They love the portability on the road. They can take this anywhere, and then they can set up like a desktop machine when they get back to the office or their home. This guy, you don't need to bring any accessories along. It's your typical Ultrabook and the tablet at the same time. You get your ports, you get your great keyboard, you get your trackpad, all that kind of thing. But 
Would you want to carry and hold this all day if you could have the two-pound version? There's the temptation. So that's the Lenovo ThinkPad Yoga. Interesting design as always. we got the keyboard side here. We have the tablet on the other side. And we have the Microsoft Surface Pro 2, one of the most portable and light full Intel Core CPU tablets on the market. Hopefully now you see the differences and you know which one's better for you. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full reviews of each of these products, watch our video reviews, and hit that like button.